Hey, what's up, everybody? Mike Lindsley back with you for an ML Sports Take. It's all brought to you by our great friends over at Empower Federal Credit Union, World of Beer, Destiny USA, and our good friends at Welch & Company Jewelers. Log on to welchjewelers.com. I also want to mention another huge, huge supporter of the platform, Rosie's Corner. If you are in and around central New York, make sure you get over there uh, between 9 a.m. and noon this Black Friday. They're going to be doing $50 gift cards for just 25 bucks. Can you believe that deal? That allows you to get even more pizza of wings, pasta, hot and cold subs, chicken and biscuits, turkey slop, fish Friday, mac and cheese, and more. Make sure you go support local business right now during these brutal times. Rosie's Corner, right on Route 11 in Burton, right off the Bartell Road exit if you're in and around Central New York. $50 gift cards for just $25. Bucks. <clears throat> Coming up, Black Friday at Rosie's Corner, 9 a.m. to noon. Well, I want to spend a couple of minutes previewing the St. Bonaventure basketball season. I know it's really uh, difficult to, to figure out how many games all these teams are going to play. Uh, obviously, the non-conference is the biggest challenge. Uh, St. Bonnie will start on December 30th <clears throat> at Rhode Island. Uh, they're going to play their normal A-10 slate as it is right now. That's where the A-10, the ACC, Pac-12, Big Ten, Big 12, everybody across the board, the MAC, they're planning on their home and away being as is in conference. And we know that that's still a few weeks away. Uh, so that maybe delays the inevitable in terms of some more coronavirus problems and this and that, some travel, etc. You can maybe move some games around and all. Right now, the challenge is just getting the season off the ground, COVID ramping up a little bit with some positive tests around campus, some kids going home early, some of the men's and women's basketball teams staying on certain campuses across the country, some games scheduled, uh, some not, uh, some games being pulled back. We know the Bonnies are in one of those spots where they've actually pulled back here uh, because of the coronavirus situation, some of the positive tests in and around the team, around the campus, and so we wait to see when they will start. Right now, the schedule says December 15th, their first game against Akron. Unfortunately, if you're a Bonaventure fan, you like me, or you're an alum, same thing uh, for me, uh, you are looking forward to the first tournament of the year, which was going to have Power mid-major and Stephen F. Austin. Remember a team last year that beat Duke at the buzzer in Cameron. That wild scramble uh, on the Duke side, <clears throat> offensively losing the basketball, and Stephen F. Austin runs the ball back, and they score basically at the buzzer on uh, that freak tip lay-in situation. I think it was 85-83, if I remember correctly. Uh, Stephen F. Austin was going to be in that tournament. Uh, a very good Vermont team was going to be in that tournament. And, of course, uh, 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 an Army team uh, that, that, that plays up and down as well was going to be in that. That was going to be a lot of fun for the Bonnies, but as it is right now, Mark Schmidt's team will have to wait and see when they do, in fact, play the non-conference games. It's just going to be uh, a total crapshoot and who's going to schedule when, where, how, etc. Uh, will there be a bubble situation with certain tournaments? I don't know how all that's going to happen. Nobody knows right now, so we just have to kind of wait and see. But if you're looking for a team uh, in, in a mid-major conference uh, to have the season go one way or the other... I think it's St. Bonaventure. I think that's the bottom line. And what I mean by that is one way is going to go straight into the NCAA tournament uh, as an at-large, maybe around one of the top, mm, I, I would say one of the top 60 teams in the country, maybe one of the top 55 teams in the country. Maybe you could expand it all the way to that final 68 number uh, to get in the NCAA tournament. Please, God, let us have an NCAA tournament this year. My goodness, we can't miss it two years in a row. Um, because the Bonnies stay healthy and all the guys they picked up in the transfer portal and the guys they picked up from JUCO and the freshman class coming in and the great juniors that they have in terms of Kyle Loft and Dominic Welch and Oshun Oshunini, uh, you know, everything goes according to plan <clears throat> and they're one of the top three teams, maybe two teams, maybe they're the best team in the Atlantic 10, but major competition right up there at the top is we know Dayton, Richmond, and St. Louis should be NCAA tournament teams, but there's no reason for the Bonnies not to contest one of those three teams, if not all of them for a top three spot or the top spot if everything goes really, really well. The other side of it could be that the Bonnies still have a respectable season, but they're just not quite there yet. Perhaps they have an injury to one of the big three. Perhaps they can't get enough non-conference wins. Last year, they really slipped up in the non-conference. They had some pretty darn good wins in the non-conference, including Rutgers, a team that was pretty good in the Big Ten. Obviously, everything shut down later on anyway, so it didn't matter. 
but they can't afford losses to, you know, if they play Canisius. They can't afford to lose that game this year. They can't afford to lose to UB this year. No disrespect to the UB Bulls. They can't slip up in those games. The Bonnies have to win out-of-conference games. In other words, the first two games right out of the out of the get-go against the Zips and, and the Bulls, Akron and, and Buffalo respectively, you got to start 2-0 right there. You can't mess around with those games. But if the Bonnies have a slip up here or there, if they lose a couple of you know bad games in the A-10 this year, I think they lost to seven overall teams last year in the A-10. This team will be right around that bubble type area going into the A-10 tournament with most national pundits, <clears throat> you know, thinking that the Bonnies need to win the A-10 tournament to get it done. How does the roster look? It looks really good. I mean, this is as deep, as balanced, as versatile a, a team that Mark Schmidt has had in a few years. Again, it starts with that great junior class with Welch and with Lofton and Ocean, uh, Oshun Oshinini. Uh, and then you add to it uh, a bunch of guys who come into the program via transfer, via uh, you know community college, whatever the case may be, via freshman class. I love Quentin Metcalf as the freshman uh, class comes in. I think this kid, super versatile. Remember, he spent a ton of time in Korea. He's played for some uh, prep teams and private schools and all the rest. He's played on a ton of travel teams. He's got an international feel. He's really, really versatile. He's a 6'8 forward. He can play in and out. Really good athlete here in Quentin Metcalf as well. I think he leads the way in this freshman class. Maybe Josh Bell sees some time uh, with, with this backcourt. Not really sure. The guard there out of Maryland. Uh, how can you not love, uh, you know, the, the 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 versatility and the balance of this team right here? Anthony Roberts, obviously the transfer from Kent State. Um, you know, the Bonnies can play short. They can play. Uh, they can play uh, uh, tall. They can play. Um, uh, you know, they can play small ball a little bit. Maybe add an extra guard into the into the equation, of course. Uh, and, and of course, Jaron Holmes uh, just switching the last name as well. Uh, I think he's going to have a really big year as a junior for this club, uh, the Michigan native. Uh, I think they've got to go to him a lot. I think he could be one of these big time guys uh, for Mark Schmidt. You know, oftentimes we talk about the one, two, three. Uh, you know, the trio of players uh, at, at the pro level and and also at the collegiate level you know you got to have three guys to win a championship you think bird Parrish, mckelly you think jordan pippen rodney you think magic kareem and worthy uh and you think that way at the college level as well you got to have a power big three uh to 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 do well uh whether it's a mid-major like bonner or a powerhouse like duke three guys to stay healthy all the time and lead the way well then the other part of it is you need that next guy the next guy and the next guy after that you know who's going to be that fourth player who's going to be that almost x factor for st bonaventure it very well could be jaron holmes or a newcomer like metcalf or the transfer roberts from kent state so i really like the bonnies this year i think they will finish in the top four of the atlantic 10 I think there's potential there for them to finish in the top three or even higher than that in the top couple. Dayton, Richmond, St. Louis is going to be really, really hard. But how does St. Bonaventure make the, the tournament this year? They don't have major slip-ups in the non-conference. They fare well enough against the top tier of the Atlantic 10, and they don't lose multiple games in the 8-10 to the likes of UMass and the uh, the Fordhams and the Duquesnes and those type of teams, the George Washingtons. Take care of business against teams underneath you in conference and out of conference. Try to get a signature win or two against the top echelon of the A-10. Stay healthy and, of course, get involvement from people beyond the big three. If those things take place, I think the Bonnies have potential <clears throat> to dance as we await for more games in the non-conference. Mike Lindsley with you, ML Sports Take, all over IGTV, Facebook, and YouTube. Make sure you hit me on Twitter, at Mike L Sports. Download my podcast called the ML Sports Platter all over the major platforms like Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your podcasts on your smartphone device. We are presented by Bryant & Stratton College, Welch & Company Jewelers, Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual New York State, and our great friends over at Rosie's Corner. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.